Welcome everybody. This is Jane Gardner at Finding Your Purpose Today TV and today on our show we have Andy McDowell. Andy is an engineer so I have something in common with him. We know all about the same challenges of being engineers and uh, being a technician but he's also creative so this is surprising because I know many engineers and they're not creative so I'm going to be looking into that really and he spent 22 years with the Boeing company where he always felt more like a life coach than an um, engineer and a boss. In 2002, he began his journey into entrepreneurship within a corporation when he was asked to develop an airspace design and consulting business from scratch. Wow, that would be hard. That would serve the global government market. Andy has a bachelor's degree from Georgia Tech in electrical engineering and a master's degree in computer information systems from Georgia uh, State. Naturally, his aviation work uh, took him around the world and enabled him to work on many high-profile projects like the uh, Beijing and uh, Sochi airports for their respective uh, Olympic Games. So we're really excited to talk to Andy about um, his um, his basically his purpose and uh, his journey from getting from where he was to where he is now. So first of all, I better welcome you, uh, Andy. Well, Andy, uh, hi. <laughs> hi, Jane. Hi. <laughs> Great to be with you today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Andy, um, maybe you could um, tell us, um, I'm really excited to find out how an engineer um, become can become uh, into the business that you're in. It sounds like uh, your business actually did help you with finding your other purpose so um my husband he's he's never really a, a true engineer but uh right now he has to work in engineering so it's really exciting to see how you manage the the journey uh just maybe i can help him get into his retirement so andy please <laughs> <laughs> how did how did you manage that um so I always had um, a love for airplanes, uh, built the plastic models uh, as a kid, was fascinated with the fact that such a heavy piece of metal could stay up in the air uh, from that perspective. So when I had the opportunity to, you know, coming out of grad school and got into um, a couple companies uh, they were aviation based and uh, the last one being, you know, that um, the United States uh, largest exporter dollar wise company called Boeing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, a true, true joy and passion in my life uh, came to be to be able to work for a company so involved in the aviation community. Um, however, it little to do with electrical engineering. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so everything control. everything that I learned uh, how to do with airspace uh, design, simulation modeling, the work that we did was all on the job training uh, using my technical computer skills at first uh, to help the small little entrepreneurial company that I worked for um, become digitized and help reduce their expenses by 75% and their delivery time to customers from about two weeks to a couple of days um from that perspective but it was uh, along the journey you know 22 years for the boeing company um come to find out the, the part of the work that i did as it moved up the leadership chain that i enjoyed the most was the engagement with uh with my team members and helping them to grow as individuals as well as grow in their position in their careers uh giving the most satisfaction and what got me out of the out of the bed every morning, uh, regardless of where I was in the world, because <laughs> wow. I was, I was spending, you know, half the close to half of the year outside the office and somewhere in the world, helping the government bring, um, GPS technology into their, uh, flight and ground operations was wow. what we were basically doing, trying to help them be more efficient in their operations using the GPS technology. Wow. Yeah, that's really important. Um, yeah, yeah, that's very exciting that you worked for the on the Beijing and, and then, you know, Olympics and, and everything like that. It must have been high pressure and, 
and but you just you like working with your team members instead of the <laughs> pressure i'm sure um yeah so how did you um uh, evolve into another uh business um obviously there were certain changes in your your position but um maybe you could tell us that how did you get into coaching well yeah uh, you know my goal a career with, with the boeing company was to work for them for about 30 years uh, i made it to 22 when i along with a thousand or thousands of other employees were um laid off because of the Boeing 737 MAX crisis right. uh, that the company went through. So it, my, my goal was shortened by eight years. So I decided instead of doing what I originally planned part-time to, to fully engage with it full-time. Wow. Um, and follow my true joys and passions as opposed to getting back into the corporate world or, or the aviation world. Um, I thought I could make a more lasting impact in people's lives doing that as opposed to sticking to aviation. Right. Yeah. So you did it part time while you were working in aviation or you felt that working, you know, with your um, your team was really a lot like um, coaching in a way because you have to make sure they're all working and uh, doing what they need to do or and um, yeah. So it, you just sort of started in life coaching. Well, I just took the philosophy and mindset. Um, uh, let me take a step back. I feel like there's a lot about life that overlaps business. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I developed um, some methodologies in my head about how to how to approach the whole conversation with either my teammates that I was leading and directing or others within the, the company that sought me out as a mentor. Wow. Um, and, uh, had some comments made by people about how, how good I was at doing it. And even had one gentleman say, why are you still here? Oh, uh, you're wow. so good at this. Why don't, why don't you leave the Boeing company and right. go do this full time? And I said, well, I still have some things I want to try and push and accomplish within the company. Uh, that still haven't been realized yet. So I like to stick around and try and get those accomplished before I go out and do this full time. But, uh, you know, a different decision was made for me. Yes, that, that was the same decision on why we went in into our home office, uh, our own business too. We had no plans back in 20 years ago. So, mm -hmm. so you're uh, actually a business focus, um, coach and, um, what what's what's the connection between um when you're working with a client um finding their purpose and their business because i i feel that there's a certain you're always happiest when you you know you have your purpose business rather than you know purposeful mm -hmm. business rather than just you know picking what's the hottest new subject um sort of thing so so how do you approach that kind of uh um idea with your client well, my ultimate goal is for business owners to live a life of joy, happiness, and success. And your your chance of achieving that is at its greatest when you're in a business that you have a love and a passion for. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a sense of purpose in it. So that's where I usually like to start the conversation <laughs> somewhat centered around with, well, okay, why are you in this business? Mm. Oh, good. You know, do I do I get an answer that's more like, well, this particular industry seems to be very profitable and growing and so forth and so on, where they're sort of looking outside themselves mm -hmm. at what the market is doing versus um, any kind of introspection and and thought and mindset behind it to say, no, this is what I really enjoy doing and. Uh, yes, I want to make some money and be successful at it, but that's secondary to my joy and happiness in life. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, how, how would you, what would be the process? Do you take like, um, you know, do you decide at some point, oh, it looks like they're okay. They've sort of, you know, when you're working with them, you know, there looks like this is going to be the direction that will work for them and, and is purposeful and might make them happy. Or does it take like two or three, you know, um, sessions or, 
Um, how do you, how do you do that? Do you have exercises? Sorry, I'm I'm into <laughs> I'm into. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't do it myself. So I'm always interested to find out how how you know you you're able to um, help them define what they're how happy they're going to be in their business sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I, I generally like to start with them in a workshop that I offer that's um, oh. based on a on the be, um, be, do, have model. Mm -hmm. So society in Hollywood likes to sell the model of um, do, have, be. I, I go do these things uh, in the world that's going to go make a lot of money and then I get to have these mm -hmm things in my life between homes and cars and right. airplanes and villas and so forth and so on. And then that enables me to be a certain way in the world. Um, yeah, but research has shown that the true path to joy and happiness in the world is to, is to do it in a be, do, have, mm -hmm. um, that's good timeline, so to speak, where you mm -hmm. discover who you, who you are and, and who the, the being part, how, how are you going to be in this world? Mm -hmm. Um, and in a workshop, they have to do some homework ahead of time to get some feedback from people that they trust in their life. Right. And so we do that exercise to discover who they are in this world and then, okay, what do you want to do that aligns with your being in this world? And we take those inputs and then we start putting it in a, in a methodology I developed that's based off a of business strategy that enables you to, to develop a life strategy for yourself. Um, and then once we have your life strategy, we can start working on the business oh, wow. pieces around your business plan and those things to make sure that you're the work you're doing is a, a going to make you successful in business, but B is aligned with who you are in this world so that you can maximize the potential of achieving joy and happiness and success in your life. Wow. Yeah, that's really exciting. I didn't know that um, you could actually do that because I always, you know, so that's really interesting because that's why I, I do this show to find out the different ways that people find their purpose. Mm -hmm. And that that's really a good um, sort of, driven way and in, in focused way in finding your purpose because i mean a lot of people wander in terms of finding what they're they're happiest at yeah it's great, great for people that likes a lot of structure in their life mm -hmm. um or or need some kind of path or plan mm -hmm. to focus on to get themselves where they are if you're a fly by night kind of person it seems overly burdensome and you know we try to tone, <laughs> tone it down to a certain degree to sort of help you out and give you more guideposts or swim lanes, so to speak, as opposed to a real hard life strategy plan, but at least something that you can um, do some focus focusing on to get yourself to where you want to be. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. That's very exciting. We should have, uh, yeah, we should. Um, um, do you run this on a, is this just as part of your system or? Or is this a workshop that you run, you know, every four months or, 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 or well, obviously with um, the pandemic, you don't do it at the moment, live. At, yeah. At the moment I do it sort of on an on demand mm -hmm. basis. You yeah. know, I like to, to keep the numbers small mm -hmm. so that I can give personalized attention as they're, you know, the workshop is a, a little bit of instruction and then a lot of Mm -hmm. working by the uh, participants, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about things and reading the inputs they got from other people and putting some thought to it. And I can go from person to person and provide some guidance as they're going through their thoughts and so forth. If I've, I, if I got a dozen people in the room, it's difficult to do that. Yeah, so I like that, to keep it small. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what with the pandemic, we're not doing too much of that now. Um, <laughs> True. <laughs> but <laughs> So, so after uh, let's, let's go through your whole, whole process. Then uh, once, once they find, they, you know, start, you put together their business plan and then you follow through with them as they go along in their adventure or, or is, is that where you, you, you just sort of monitor. Depends, depends. Yeah. It just depends what the client mm -hmm. wants. Some people 
feel like, no, I got it. I just needed something to work off of and I've got it. And they might, might ring me up, you know, once a year or something, have a conversation on a particular issue or, um, you know, I have a mastermind like group that they can join where we meet once a month for half a day and be a member of that, where they're getting, you know, monthly feedback from not only myself, but the other participants in the group, um, as they're going, going along, working on their business plan and their business. Oh, wow. So it just depends on how much guidance or how much hand holding, so to speak, do they Mm -hmm. want? Yeah, yeah, we should have. Uh, yeah, I mean, mastermind would be be great for 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 anyone for sure. Um, so let's let's talk about your creativity and how you feel that how you feel that's um, developed your your business and your your purpose and um, because yeah, um, engineers are not known for being creative usually. <laughs> um, were you creative before you became an engineer? That's that's sort of my husband, really, in a way. He's an engineer. He's he's he sort of went into engineering because it was he loved math. But uh, I don't know how how did it happen for you and creativity is. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, this, the beginnings of it started in my personal life and with my hobbies. So oh. I, um, as a teenager, begged and begged my parents to let me get a camera. And um, they hopped on a train, you know, uh, grew up in northern New Jersey, and they, they hopped on a train when we one day we went into New York City to one of the big oh, wow. camera stores where you can get the best prices. And they bought me a camera and a couple of lenses and so forth. And uh, ultimately became the uh, sports photographer for the high school yearbook and newspaper, as well as the local paper. Um, developed my own black and white film and prints mm-hmm. and so forth taught myself how to do all that. And that's where my creative journey started. I'm still an avid photographer today. Oh, good. Um, working on my craft throughout the years. And then, um, as a young adult, I got encouraged, uh, from my wife at the time to get involved in, um, the choir at a church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and next, next thing I knew within, I don't know, about six months of starting that, I was, uh, up in front of the congregation singing the solo. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, uh, from a major, major church piece and the name escapes me at the moment, mm-hmm. um, from that particular point. So, you know, music, I became very active in music from a young adult, mm on and then five years six years ago i went and bought a guitar and started teaching myself how to play guitar now I'm a rhythm guitarist and the singer in the praise band at my church so uh, i always try i always see creativity as a muscle that right. we're that we're all born with you know it, I, I get a little bit wrapped around the axle when somebody tells me they're not a creative person i like yeah. to push back and go no you just don't practice creativity you know, it's a, it's a journey and it's a muscle that you got to keep exercising. You just need to find something that's creative that you enjoy doing, um, from that perspective. And I, I found myself going through my career, um, that my strengths were in strategy and with strategy, you've got to uh, have some visionary skills. You got to be creative in nature, an ability to think out of the box per se, and uh, look at possible different avenues for your business that might bring you some success. And so I think, you know, doing all the photography and music pieces on the personal side to keep my creative muscles um, per se going helped and enabled my career on the strategy side. Oh wow, yeah, we could get off on a uh, wander off on creativity as well, <laughs> because <laughs> because I'm an artist. So, but we won't we won't do that because we'll, we're we're talking about business. Um, business is creative, so I can certainly agree. You can you can put that into your business strategies as well. Um, but one of the topics that you want to talk about was intentional living, and I think I think that's very exciting because I feel that's also one of the important things to do in your life. And so I'd like you to talk about that as well, please. Yeah. How, how do you feel that intentional is better? 
than random <laughs> living. Well, the, the example I like to use in my, in my coaching, uh, when it, when it comes to intentionality is, uh, the imagery of you being in a life raft or a, a rubber boat or mm-hmm. something of that nature doesn't have an engine on it. You, you might at best have a couple paddles in it and you're sitting, uh, out in the ocean somewhere. And if you're not living your life with intentionality, then, you know, the ocean is just pushing you around. Uh-huh. You're just sort of going with, going with the flow mm-hmm. and, sort of letting life happen to you Mm -hmm. uh, and sort of a a hope for the best um, Mm -hmm. kind of attitude, so to speak, versus if you're living with intentionality and you're being introspective and thinking about what you want out of your life and how am I going to set a path, so to speak, to achieve that for myself, it's more like you're in a sailboat or a motorboat with a rudder on it that enables you to uh, get yourself to the port of call that you want for your life. And you may think one port of call is, um, is your spot at the moment, but then as you're on your journey in your motorboat or sailboat to that, you might learn some things or have some second thoughts or see other people doing something that changes your mind. And so now you want to go to a different port of call. Well, you just take your rudder and adjust your heading and start moving in that direction. So eventually you get to the port of call that you're trying to achieve. Um, but it's, it's very difficult to do that in, in a rubber boat with a couple of paddles getting pushed around by the wind and the ocean. Right. Oh, wow. That's, and a that's the kind of analogy I like to throw on the table when I talk to people about living an intentional life. Right. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm also in, in interested in, in that and uh, self-awareness, especially that's in, in one way why I, I do um, finding your purpose. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and being intentional is, is so important. In, and, um, you know, it, 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 it it took me a few years. Uh, so <laughs> you being intentional can take some time. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you have that analogy of, of going from one port to a next, like you can change your intention, you don't have mm-hmm. to be, always be the same intention. Yeah, yeah I developed a, a, a life plan for myself, I don't know, a dozen years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And I revisit I take time between Christmas and New Year's at the end of every year and review it and see if I want to make any adjustments or so forth based mm-hmm. off of, uh, life circumstances right. or something I learned about myself or about the world or something of that nature that, um, makes me want to, you know, tweak certain things within, within the life plan. So I'm just, by doing that, I'm slightly changing the port of call. <laughs> Great analogy. I love that. <laughs> so um I I thought maybe we would um have a look at your um your uh, information uh, on the screen uh so people can take notes and maybe you could talk about um what your free consultation may be uh and how what kind of you know what what is sort of like the schedule for that or you know the schedule but you know what what do you guys chat about on your free consultation that kind of thing would be great Andy Sure. So my company name is uh, Generate Your Value, and my, my contact information is at the, the bottom of the card uh, to include my website, which is the best way to find out about me and get a hold of me uh, it is through email. What, what I offer potential clients is a free consultation in the beginning. Uh, if you're in town here in Atlanta, where I'm from, uh, I'll meet up for a cup of coffee, and if not, we'll just do it via Zoom call or a phone call. Um, but in, in that first hour of spending time with you, it's, I, I like to just to get to know who you are and start discovering, peeling onions back, uh, onion layers back, so to speak about where you think your joys and happy happiness is, uh, in your life, a little bit about your history, who you are as a person, mm-hmm. uh, what you want different about your life kinds of things uh, and to try and gather enough information to 
A, decide whether it'd be a good fit for you. I'm not going to be a good fit for everybody. Right. Um, and B, uh, what might be a good strategy or path forward in terms of my services to um, generate value in your life, which is where why I named my company. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Of what course. I did. <laughs> Um, can we have a, a brief uh, chat about your podcast? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know about it. Otherwise, I would put it up on the end card. So you have a podcast that you do? I, I have a I have a podcast. Uh, we generally release episodes every Tuesday afternoons. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Generate Your Value. It's available on all the major mm -hmm. podcast platforms. Uh, you can also uh, get to it on my website. Uh, I have a co-host, Zach Levy, who's... Um, in the financial services business. So you have, you have a business coach with a business owner. Um, we're f a couple weeks away from finishing up season number two. We're going to take a break yeah. July and August mm -hmm. um, to get ourselves ready for season three, which will start uh, shortly after Labor Day in September. And we talk about all things relative to life, leadership, and small business. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to illustrate why we feel uh, there's a huge overlap between life and business. And so if you can develop an intentional life like we talked about and mm -hmm. be introspective and take some of the tools of life, um, then you can easily translate them. It takes a little bit of translation. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but um, translate it into being a very effective leader uh, in your business, whether you're a solo entrepreneur or, or have a team of people that you're leading, uh, to do it in a way that you'll get high levels of engagement from your team and be successful, uh, in your business. Yeah, that's, that's so important, Andy, um, for, especially for the future now with the challenges that we're going to have to, to have a successful team. And, and, um, that's great that you guys talk about that on your podcast as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, probably you probably go into a business if they're having issues they want to talk about. I'm, I, I assume that's also one of your service. You're not just looking at individuals. I would assume, um, maybe I'm assuming wrong. <laughs> well, the first, our first season was a lot of conversation about concepts and mm -hmm. a lot of it was just Zach and myself having conversations on particular topics but in season two we started bringing in uh folks for interviews and um i really like to talk about and i'm fascinated with people's stories as entrepreneurs and yeah. so i like to try and highlight stories to be inspirational for people to say it, it may seem to be scary but in the end um you've got resources out there to include somebody like myself that can help you along the journey. What it's really about is your, your mindset and your grit and tenacity and ability to, to get after it, um, are key ingredients that will a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of times overcome, you know, the challenges you face along the journey. Yeah, I totally agree. Perseverance is one of these um, um, really important things for entrepreneurs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Yeah, well, Andy, um, I think I'll let you go uh, now because it sounds like you have a very busy, <laughs> busy life. And uh, <laughs> what with the podcast and your and everything, uh, and uh, you're obviously um, you you can be a guest um, if anyone is interested or wants to talk to you. I'll put the end card up at the end, but do um, do you want to just mention that you're you're traveling, podcasting, or whatever we call it? At, what is that interview tour? It, I mean, it'll be we'll be here. I mean, I put this up for like years, so but I'm sure you'll be available for anyone to be interviewed uh, at any time. <laughs> yeah, if you if you're an entrepreneur and you feel like you have uh, an entrepreneurial story. Mm -hmm. or journey do you feel like could be inspirational to others um, or uh, instructional in some kind of nature, I'd love to hear from you. Just uh, reach out to me at my sure. email address and we'll we'll see if we can't get you on in season three. Our seasons run uh, September through June. So 
I also uh, meant you actually. PS Face <laughs> in the coming season, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm sure you've got season three planned, and I'm sure you'd be welcome to talk to any entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I meant I meant yourself. If anyone's interested in interviewing you on their podcast, you're obviously always available. Oh, yeah, I'm always yeah. always available if. If you feel like my uh, entrepreneurial story or what I talk about on my podcast or my expertise can add value to your listening audience, I'd love to have a conversation with you about coming on to your podcast and um, see if our conversation can't, I like to call them golden nuggets, lay some golden nuggets on the table for people to help them out in, in life, leadership, or in business. Yeah, for sure. For sure, right now, as an artist, I'm thinking I'm going to have to draw up a boat <laughs> going on its path. <laughs> but I won't steal that analogy. I will use it, but I, I won't. Uh, well, if, <laughs> um, if if people are interested in my photography, oh, I'm, out wow, on, yeah. I'm, I'm out on Instagram at Airspace Dude. Airspace Dude. I've got to write that Airspace down. Airspace Dude. Oh, wow. It's also my Twitter handle. If you're on Twitter and want to engage with me, mm -hmm. please do. Yeah, I haven't looked at all your, you had a lot of um, connections, so that's great. Yeah, very exciting. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Andy, uh, for coming on to the show. And um, we'll, we're hoping to get this up really soon, and uh, certainly it'll be there for the summer. So hopefully you'll get some mm -hmm. more entrepreneurs c contacting you once I put up the end card again. And uh, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, thank you very much for... Um... The, uh, the invite Jane and for the conversation and uh, yes um, I'm a little I'm a little jealous particularly this time of year that you're out in Vancouver and I'm yeah. here in Atlanta because uh, yeah. I've I've had the luxury of going to your uh, to your city a number of times in my business career and I absolutely love it. it's one of my favorites in the world yeah we're very excited uh, we're going up on the Alaska cruise this September mm. uh, it's so beautiful in September here um, yes. So you come on up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Alaska Cruise is on my list. And yeah, I is have to it? Check yeah, it off, yeah. but it's on yeah, the list. It's, it's the greatest one is through the Georgia Strait. Oh, awesome. Anyway. Yeah, partic particularly as a photographer, I'm just oh, dying to get up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to thank Andy McDowell for being on the show. And if you would like to have a free consultation with Andy about your business, you can go to generateyourvalue.com or contact him by email at andy at generateyourvalue.com in order to have um, a chat about your business. So thank you very much.